Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about the Wireshark application and how we can analyze packets in Wireshark. And this video is totally about the basics of Wireshark and what are the options available for us in Wireshark in packet capturing and penetration testing. So I have this Kali Linux uh, OS in VirtualBox. So if you don't have Kali Linux in your VirtualBox, I have a video where you can install Kali in under 5 minutes. I'll post this video in the description. You can start from there and can come and join here for this Wireshark basics. So first, there are two ways we can open Wireshark. One is via the icon that is here for Kali. So if you click on Wireshark, it will open. Or the second way is via the command line. When we when I open a terminal and uh, type Wireshark, I can see that Wireshark has started. So this is the introductory page for uh, Wireshark. And these are all the interfaces that are available that we can capture the network traffic. So I'm going to select ETH0, that is my default uh, network interface card. So how Wireshark works is, there is something called as a packet capture application, which will take a copy of every packet that is coming to your network interface card. So there is a copy of each packet that is redirected to Wireshark and Wireshark will get all the packets and analyze it on its own. So that's how it works. So I'll just start with this ETH0. If you double click, it will just start. So I haven't done any network activity. So I can see one ICMP call has gone. So I haven't done much network activity. That's why it's not capturing any packets. So what I'll do is I'll just go to my terminal and I have an application that I have already set up. I'll just ping it and I'll just send it three packets, four packets and stop it. You can see four packets transmitted, four received and zero packet loss. We can see some data from here as well. So when I go to Wireshark, I can see some data that is present here. So in order to understand Wireshark application, we have to understand three panes. So the first pane is the packet pane where all the packets are listed with the columns like these. We have the number, time, source, pack, source IP address, destination IP address, protocol, what is the length of the packet and some information that has been understood by Wireshark. We have all these in this pane. The next pane is the protocol hierarchy pane in here each protocol is listed by the hierarchy of the internet or the networking networking hierarchy you also call it as osi model uh, previously but now it's uh, like ip model whatever we can call so you can see there is a frame ethernet ipv4 here it's ipv6 i just received this packet you can see ipv4 and then it's ICMP protocol that is the final one. So when we click on it, we can see what are the data that has been transferred as part of this specific protocol. So you can see, I'll just click on this data. So this is the data that has been transmitted and has been selected. So this pane gives the segregation of protocol hierarchy and we'll see much more detailed about this pane. And this is the hexadecimal value. This is the raw hexadecimal value that can be converted into binary that has been captured in the network interface card. So each packet, the value changes and it will be displayed accordingly. So now we have seen the three panes. We'll go to the some of the filters that are available in Wireshark. So totally there are two filters that are available. One is the capture filter and the other one is the display filter. The difference between capture filter and display filter is capture filter will only capture the items that we are entering that we want. But uh, display filter will capture everything but it will display only the items that we want. 
that is the difference so here you can see some kind of uh, symbol that is capture options i'll just click it and in here i'll just say post should be 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 1 i'll just start it I'll just start this one continue the same so when I just uh, go and uh, ping again to this 10.10.10.6 .10 .10 .10 in here I will not be able to see any requests because I am just only filtering the requests that are sent to 10.10.10.1 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to 10.10.10.1 And I'm going to stop it now you can see I have got some responses that are relevant to 10.10.10.1 so this is the use of capture filter the next one is we are going to see about is the display filter display filter will only filter items that are specific to the configuration that we give for example my I want all the requests relevant to the IP address 10.10.10.5 you can see I have filtered five, six requests that are relevant to this IP address so these are the two features the filters that are available in Wireshark and next we are going to see about what are the options that are available in the options pane so the first option is used to start the capture it will start capturing the packets this one will stop capturing packets this one will restart capturing packets and this is the capture filter and the next four icons is used for saving or loading the packets so this one will say open a capture file this one will save a capture file this one will close the capture file and this one will reload the capture file and all the next set of options till from this to this is used to navigate through the packets this is used to search a packet this will also give a different kind of filter that is relevant to packets and this will go to the front if i'm just selecting here and i click on this icon it will go to the before packet after packet it will go to the specified packet this icon will go to the specified packet i have to specify what is the packet here and this one will go to the first packet last packet and this one will is a setting that we can automatically go to the last packet when a lot of requests are there let's say that i am loading 20000 requests here and when i click on this icon it will always go to the last packet and it will be will stay there itself this is useful in some cases and this is about the color coding of certain packets that uh, we will see about the color coding of certain protocols and packets in the later videos and this one is used to enlarge your text for more visibility this is to decrease the size of the text this is to, for default text size and this one is to fit the details in the width of the text you can see so these are the options that are available in the options pane we have seen what are the panes available and uh, what are the filters available and what are the icons that are available in the options pane so in upcoming videos we'll be seeing much more nitty gritty details about uh, each of these panes filters options etc that's it from my side for today thank you